So George, The Apprentice, um, not the British series with Alan Sugar, or even the, the American, American one with... with Donald Trump himself. This is uh, ironically named uh, the, the Apprentice, both for that very mm. reason and the fact that in this film, it is a story about Donald Trump as an apprentice to another similar financier figure in New York. This is set in the 1970s into the 80s in New York, and it is very much a story of America, the American dream, capitalism. Mm. Um, and we discussed this a bit on Double Take about the timing of this, mm. this film coming out. As we're recording this on the 13th of October and the election is happening within a few weeks, mm. I mean, what, where do you want to cover in terms of like, how do you even cut, talk about how this film is going to reflect on that and the weight this yeah. film is carrying? Um, you talked on Double Take about... Basically, Which you can go and check out. Yeah, I can check out. But basically, just to paraphrase, like it's been in production since 2018, finally had its premiere in Cannes this year, then almost didn't get released because of troubles with the financier and threat, threats from, uh, threats from and Trump's And given what's team. already happened this year, yeah. ha there's no way this film could, like, on the nose point at a particular moment in yeah. time to comment on something very specific but, just, but nonetheless it's coming out go check out double take if you want to just understand about how why we almost basically didn't have this film even after it was made but so this film is set around a much younger donald trump i think it starts in about 1973 new york is in a really different place to the way we love it it is the way we know and love mm. it it is riddled with crime it's run down there are entire uh, city blocks in midtown that are completely derelict and depraved um, there's, there's lots of crime, there's lots of political strife, and at the center of it is Donald Trump, who's wild, this character of Donald Trump in a way, who's wildly ambitious, um, but also very much finding his feet in this high financier society, just starting to get accepted into these very exclusive gentlemen's clubs. One of them is the is the Carnard, and he's one of the youngest people to actually be accepted into the Carnard. Is it the co Commodore? No, Commodore. But the Commodore is the building he's going to convert. The What's the club that he's in? I don't think we get a name for it. Anyway, and in one of these clubs, he meets none other than uh, Roy Cohn, the Roy Cohn, Roy Cohn played who, by fan the fantastic Jeremy Strong, who yeah. has uh, you know almost got um, a brand for himself as playing like this like disaffected, immeasurably wealthy uh, titan of scumbag. industry, <laughs> Sc scumbag, and he he's Roy Cohn, and he's got this sort of turtle hey, neck, guilty as charged, Hi. and you can see from the Trump that we know where mm. some of the, at least in this film, is dictating where some of the mm. uh, mannerisms, speaking style approach and ultimately mm. um yeah like a <laughs> journey of life comes from and it's from this guy Roko and he's going to teach him how to city tells him how to you know you got it. it's going to be the greatest ever always he, always say it's going to be incredible never deny for those who don't know Roko was a former lawyer chief prosecutor yes. who was involved in this very famous case where he prosecuted the Rosenbergs in 1953 who were convicted of being Russian spies and yeah. put to the electric chair and then he was involved in the being Senator McCarthy's chief prosecutor in the McCarthy trials, yeah. communism trials, a real scumbag. And then he became this sort of fixer in the 1970s and 80s. And he develops this relationship with a young Donald Trump, sort of like his mentor in business, but also his like his sharky lawyer for hire mm. as and when he needs it. Uh, and we follow Trump uh, as he looks to uh, build a hotel, build Trump Tower, and mm. the kind of conversations and business deals that he has to make in order to get those done. There's also another uh, a, a, a writer that he commissions to write a book about Donald Trump, mm. which event ends up coming the art of the get the art of the deal, the deal the which is uh, his four rules for successful mm. life, which he sort of takes from Roy Cohn. Um, it doesn't go anywhere near the Trump that we'll have known no, post-Apprentice TV show. This no. sort of firmly is set in the 70s and 80s, and I can sort of understand why. Um, it's presented in a really interesting way, mm. where like it's obviously shot on an Ari Alexa or something equivalent, but they add in this uh, digital scanline noise mm. and film grain that is uh, that really evokes a camcorder mm. of that era. From the 80s. Yeah. From, from the 80s and like the, the types of footage that we've seen of Trump at parties mm. where like, like it's all just like a black sea of people and then you mm. find Trump and the light is sort of flashed and it's mm. shaky and wonky. And, and it's the also sounds kind of very so, good. Sorry, it's also kind of like a degradation, isn't it? Because the kind of filmy look at the beginning, which is kind of rich in the 70s, then degrades into this like static, almost like a video semi found cam. footage and like if, if the camera ever pointed at the sky the highlights are yeah. blown out like mm. a camera of that era wouldn't have been able to keep the information in the sky in the shadows i just thought that's a really interesting mm. like and you know if someone follows someone down the street it's like it's camcorder like really distinct and to add all of that mm. like digital digital noise in there uh, but anyway george uh directed by ali abassi sorry yes yeah uh, the apprentice how did you how'd you get on with it so i, I was really uh, surprised by the apprentice actually I, I, I really liked it um oh and it stars sebastian yeah, stan, sebastian stan as <laughs> donald trump forgive me <laughs> um, 
I, I really liked The Apprentice. What, what surprised me is that it's being marketed and maybe the first half is kind of be as this kind of raucous comedy, anarchic kind of, hey, a bit like um, Adam McKay's Vice. But what surprised me was that particularly in the second half, this film becomes something much darker, much more sinister. And for me, the kind of takeaway success of the film is that by the time it got to the end, I felt almost like a visceral reaction. I felt repulsed. I felt revolted. I felt uh, uh, threatened by the monster that we'd seen be, being created in front of us. Mm. And the film has got a subtitle, which it's called Amer An American Horror Story. And the real, the, it's basically almost a kind of pseudo Frankenstein narrative about the creation of the monster of Donald Trump. And it kind of leans, especially in the second half, really leans into those kind of like horror tropes of um, physical deterioration of both Trump and Roy Cohn, uh, in, in, in comparison with the other, Trump who becomes bloated and acneed and Roy mm. Cohn sort of becomes emaciated and thin. And there's sequences where we see Trump having you know, cosmetic surgery and it's kind of shot in a way that's kind of, yeah, very horrible. disgusting and monster-like. And, you know, throughout the film, I thought it was you know, wickedly funny at times, um, different. And again, what tracking, uh, you know, Sebastian Stan's performance as it changes throughout. But for me, one of the big takeaways was how I felt afterwards and I couldn't shake it and everything about it kind of stuck with me. And I think that's what made the film for me, actually. Mm. Like it was perfectly fine and solid and enjoyable on the way through, but actually the way it lingered, the way it stank on me afterwards yeah. um, was what I was impressed by. Sebastian Stan, great performance. A great, and how great, great that last week we talked about him in A Different Man, which mm. is a film we, like, we, we, thought, we thought was interesting, not loved, but just none the, nonetheless, he's releasing films a week apart from each yeah. other that are so vastly different. Yeah. He really is one of the most exciting actors working today. And it's not, what I love is that when I, he does, he gets that cliche of he does completely disappear into the role. Totally. I never thought I was watching a Trump impression, neither did I think I was watching Sebastian Stan be very active. But it's the best Trump it, I've seen. It's incredibly but it's yet yeah, it, he's a three-dimensional character yes. in it. it's not it's not snl it no. didn't feel contrived it was like this is how this person has adopted these mannerisms because yes. that's the best way it is for him to get through business like you you yeah. don't see the hands for the first 30 minutes no. but when they start coming it's like a confidence thing yeah and um yeah, this sort of cross parallel that he and Roy Cohn are on is yeah. really interesting. And, and Roy Cohn also could have a whole film made about himself. Like yeah, a real brilliant. nasty Machiavellian. I'd work. want the last 10 years, the last 20 years. Yeah, the, yeah. Like what you described, like the carpet, like the whole like Roy Cohn origin story. Um, brilliant. I, and I think, yeah, equally, Jeremy, Jeremy Strong is, is, is fantastic. But I, I, I yeah, it's, it's a kind of pseudo horror film not a million miles away from like pablo loren stuff um, yeah. with jackie and actually it, it shares i believe the i think it's the same cinematographer as that um uh just yeah it's uh it's it's it by i got to the, by the time i got to the end i was like this is the real american psycho mm. this is the real monster here yeah. and um the, check out interviews with ali abassi where he talks about what his idea was with framing it and part of the thing he wanted to co uh, communicate was how um evilly simple it was for Trump to get where he was in a way. There's a simplicity to his approach. It's this kind of dumbed down um, amalgamation of everything of actually, I'm going to talk very simply. I'm going to bully my way through. Mm. Um, but yeah, a really interesting piece of work. And I think Sebastian Stan, I'd love to see him recognized for it. Yeah, um, American Psycho and Vice were both just screaming into my yeah, head, yeah. like a horrible monster baby that had been produced. In the same way that like what Vice does really well is it um, indulges in this horrifying monstrous silhouette that Dick mm. Cheney is in that film. Uh, you get the formation of the monster of Trump with the hair, with the tan, mm. with the with sort of grotesque body thing. And yeah, so immediately when I, well, also not immediately, like within 30 minutes, my main thought was, I'm really enjoying it, performances are fantastic but it did the film did not need this election to be happening at the same time to work mm. but it actually really benefits from mm. having everything happening with donald trump at the same time because what you find most likely really like disturbing and grotesque yeah. and horrifying about it is that we are inundated yes, with course. what happens when that yeah. is given another 20 years yeah. and like no surprise it's the donald trump we have today who's obviously the, he was the president of the united states and yeah. very much by the time people are some people yeah. could be listening to us and they know if he is or isn't and i thought that they, they've managed to just like despite everything finding a way to release film in a way that just balances mm. that really really well i think sebastian stands brilliant in it i always think mia, mia maria baklava who plays yeah, Ivana trump yeah. is fantastic in it um yeah and i just thought the style was really interesting and really bold and to really feel mm. like you've been taken back into a moment 
in time. Yeah. Um, and it's actually a very small film. There aren't yes. that many characters. There aren't that many locations, but it feels like it really carries you through a story. It's so much of an interesting warning about what America can be for some people and yes. what, what, what behavior is rewarded. And I think it deserves yeah. to be observed in the way that we would talk about American Psycho as yeah. being a story about capitalism and greed and America. And I think it works so well. It's a damning indictment of the system that allowed him to be yeah. who he was, and Roy Cohen as well. Yeah, like what, what uh, sort of like uh, profiteering and uh, market movements would have been like in the 70s into the mm. 80s and like coming into Reagan's America and the mm. approach to all of that is, I think is a really interesting and slightly underexplored version of mm. capitalism in New York. And I just, I really, really enjoyed that. I think also the, what I loved is that the, you know, your, you said, yeah, it's a very small film in terms of its, its yeah. you know, characters, but the world you're kept in is also quite tight as well. It's in, especially in the first half in the sort of shimmering, um, grainy film 70s world is opulent and brown and gold and you know the club where he meets Roy Cohen yeah. everything is very sort of baggy uh, and stuffy yes yeah, this stuffy, is sort of like um, uh, this is richness to it I mean no pun intended obviously richness but this is kind of grandness to it that I find it's kind of tacky it's, it's a lot of like it's pre-2008 crash we had we had a, like a minimalism in design that happened after the 2008 yeah, 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 crash yeah, yeah. that really came through of like stripping back removing decluttering debagifying whereas this was like an era of acquisition and gain and more, more is more more is more more gold and leaf then, and then when the the 1980s comes in and you said you know with the change to the the, the static video yeah. look it makes everything look so hollow and cheap and nasty and yeah. tacky and also the the music really shifts as well like yeah. you kind of get this kind of rock and roll punk energy in the 70s which is kind of I think the film is deliberately trying to frame, it's not asking for your sympathy with Trump, but it's trying to make you understand that like no. this guy was just an ambitious guy, yeah. you know, contextualizing his ambition as well and where with New York was at the time. I, but then when we move to the 80s, that the, the music becomes incredibly monstrous and yeah. sinister and, and, and warning us as an audience member. And um, I, I wondered for a, a very brief moment in the beginning, I was like, am I rooting for Trump to get this building uh, made yeah. as big as he can? <laughs> and then very quickly the film uh, yeah. confirmed to me that you definitely are. No, you definitely. And um, you know, the film makes some bold decisions. It's funny it? as well. There's moments they're absolutely real, real chucklesome moments. I mean, there, there's, um, the film makes some bold decisions and there's one particular decision, uh, a scene later on in yeah. the film, which is really stark. And I think some people might be split on, but I, the way that the film handled that was really key to giving me that kind of visceral reaction because it's yeah. something happens and you expect a kind of space to process that but what the film does is it just drives forward again on the soundtrack it is given no time and it's this kind of relentless like unstoppability it's not Trump. the film's defining moment it's part no. of its whole journey and yeah. i think that's kind of the story of trump in a lot of ways it's like yeah. none of that would ever be his defining moment um yeah, and this, I, I really I think Roy Cohen's actually a really great character in this mm. in this film, and like the way in which he perceives what you have to do to get ahead, and some mm. of the things that he's done and kept to keep tabs on people. That's such an interesting world of like pre-internet analog media of how you would keep people on your side, the way in which they uh, manipulate funding when New York is completely impoverished and they yeah. need to fund everything else and there's this this horrifying uh hypocrisy and this corruption of how they manage to yeah. get the extortionate amounts of funding to get their building made and also the kind of um but it doesn't surprise it's, you it's the filth of nixon as well you begin yeah. the, the the film opens with a shot from nixon the i am not a crook speech yeah. and it just contextualizes the whole thing about the corruption in america and also kind of like america was at like, like a crossroads between and particularly framed through New York, repairing itself uh, and redeeming itself or kind of leaning into the sleaze to kind of get itself out of it. And Trump was this, uh, he did, did loads of TV interviews and he was this symbol of like American ambition and rejuvenation. Right. Yeah. It's like, I believe in New York. Yeah. I think it's terrible what's happened. The mayor's done a terrible job. Yeah. Everybody knows this. He's done a bad job. I believe in New York and I think we're going to make mm. a real statement to the rest of the people that this mm. is going to be. And you're like, yeah, but I, I t I've seen those interviews in mm. real life and I believe you in this in this moment in time. So it's like, you know, it's being, it, lo it looks like a kind of Political raucous, kind of fun, uh, mm. you know, no, comedy, but it's, not, it's got yeah. dirt under its fingernails and you will leave with this kind of sickening feeling. I really, you know, I want, I'd love Sebastian Stan to get some praise for this and, and, and you know, even be nominated, but I do wonder if just the whole association I, with I Trump, think, I think people would just be like, you know what, I'm just going to sidestep that. But yeah. A great it would great feel like an for oscar him. for donald trump in a way that's which, the thing unless, it well, isn't unless if if trump loses the election people might be happy to vote for sebastian because yeah. it's like the specter has moved on but 
Anyway, obviously we're recording this on Some October the thirteenth, <laughs> so don't don't uh, come after us. But anyway, uh, I, I really, I was, yeah, I was impressed. And I'd love to actually hear what people think about it. And even if you might not, even if the idea of the film might give you the ick, I think for the performances it's worth it. Yeah. Jeremy Strong, so exciting. Sebastian mm. Stan, so exciting. Mm. Great, great film. That was The Apprentice. Uh, that's coming out on the Friday, the eighteenth. That's Guilty this, this week. As charged. Guilty as charged. Guilty. Oh, well, it's this sort of he's Donald. Got this. Your case is a nightmare. It's, it's Christopher Walken. I can What do you? It's what are you never doing? gonna happen. The biggest one in the world. Um, <laughs> it's out this week. Yeah, let us know your thoughts. Hello, at popkitchenpodcast.com. <laughs> <laughs>